Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, um, Allie and Paws. Where'd he go? <laughs> oh, he's cut off camera. Well, whatever. You know, that's Cass. Today I thought I'd do a video about what it's like having a service dog in college slash university. Um, I just thought it would be really helpful to anyone who's going and if you're curious, stick around and figure out what that's like. So. Where do service dogs go when you're going to college slash university with them? So I think the first thing we should go over is the fact that in the United States of America, we have the Americans with Disability Act and FHA, Federal Housing Administration. Both of those things provide protections for service dog handlers, both in housing and in public access. If you're going to a public university, then So if you're going to a public university, those are the things that will protect you. So the FHA is for the dorm and ADA is for public access. So that is basically what gives you your rights as a handler to take your dog, service dog, to school with you. And basically what those things say is that anywhere that the general public is allowed, the service dog is allowed. And if you are somebody that is providing housing to people, um, if you provide housing to over a certain number of people, then you have to abide by FHA, which says that service dogs are allowed to live with their handler and you cannot charge them for a pet fee, do breed restrictions or weight restrictions on service animals. So those are some great things that we have in place in the United States to protect handlers um, and their service dogs, which is our medical equipment, which helps us live our daily lives in a way that is fulfilling like everybody else. So. What's that mean? It basically means that when you go to college slash university with a service dog, it basically means you have like a little companion helper that comes with you basically everywhere to the dining hall, to um, classes, sport events. That's all I can think of right now, but basically any event that happens on campus, you and your dog are welcome to come because they're a service animal and they're protected by the law, which means they get to come. Obviously, the exception to this would be if you decided to not bring the dog and you decided to just kennel them, then, you know, that's your prerogative and you can do what you would like um, and do what's best for you and your dog. So where do they go when you're going to class and you're like in class? <laughs> so what they basically do is just lay on the floor and go to sleep. The only time that's kind of like not the case is when they're tasking. I guess if they're not sleepy, <laughs> like it's not a requirement for them to go to sleep, so they don't have to go to sleep. Some handlers will bring things like toys and stuff like that for the dogs to do just because class is boring um, and some people just like to do that. Sometimes I would bring a bene bone with me. I mean, I don't know. I don't really bring that much stuff with me as far as that goes. As far as what I brought to class for like just everyday usage, that would include poop bags, a collapsible bowl um, for food and water, usually like a, something to chew it, just if he's bored, if I see he's bored and kind of struggling to settle. I'll give him something to chew but usually that's not a problem once they get older that was more of a thing when he was younger and that's about it and usually in class I would pick to sit in like the front area because I felt like I could see better without my glasses even though I would still use my glasses I liked to be able to sit there if like I ever forgot my glasses or if we're doing something that I don't feel like wearing glasses for right then and there because I tend to like only use my glasses for long distance so me personally I like to sit somewhere in the class like if we're doing an activity I can look up and still see without having to continuously put my glasses back on and whatnot and also it just gives them a lot more room to spread out and still not be in the walkway because like typically teachers will teach and there will be like this like space that no one's really using <laughs> So I'm like, hey, you could lay in that space and that's fine. Obviously, I would just move him um, if someone was like needing to go wherever he was at. But typically, it would just be him laying in that little like right in front of me. So he really wasn't taking up much room and like the teacher had plenty of room to still walk and talk and stuff. And we never had any problems with it. And we did that all the years that we went to school. <laughs> um, some handlers do like to have their dogs tuck under the chair or their table or whatever. Um, me personally, it gives me anxiety to not be able to see my dog. So I don't use any tasks or commands really that would bring him out of my eyesight because it's just not comfortable for me. The only time that we do tuck is when we have to. So like airplanes and when the buses were really full to the point that he had to go under the seat to, for everyone just to be able to fit in. So yes, the bus 
just got that cramped. My school is very large. So are professors and students aware of service dog etiquette? The short answer to this is usually no. <laughs> Um, especially if you go to a school that is smaller and doesn't have like a puppy raising program. A lot of universities have puppy raising programs, mine did. Since there's a puppy raising program, a lot of the raisers have done so much work to pretty much educate people about, about service animals and the proper etiquette around them. You don't talk to them, you don't pet them, you don't distract them and things like that. So when you have all these people raising puppies and they're all like kind of told people before about you don't do this to service dogs or service dogs in training, um, it really, really helps helps us handlers who eventually like go to the school because a lot of the general public already knows so definitely shout out to razors for not only what they do but also for that <laughs> that go to university and educate the general public because my time at school was made a lot easier from people knowing those things like in the general public people don't know this stuff they like literally every time we go out someone does something that they shouldn't be doing every time I went to class while there usually was at least some one person doing what they shouldn't have been doing considering i passed like hundreds of people on the daily <laughs> like it wasn't near as bad if, can you imagine if every person like if the statistics were the same for the general public and university of how much people distract your dog you would be dealing with so much more in university because there's so much more people there at least obviously where i live because <laughs> where i live is um my university is much more packed than where i normally live if you live in the city that's probably a different thing as far as like what people would do to distract him, it really varied. Um, most people would just kind of do an awe and that's fine. I'm cool with that as long as it's not like super obtrusive to where it's gonna like catch his attention, which most w things won't unless you're like being really, really dramatic with it, which is why I said super obtrusive. So yeah, people usually would just awe or whatever or say like, oh, a puppy or so he's so cute, things like that. that you know, they don't really matter as far as like my dog and me being distracted by it or our day getting like not going well because of it, I guess you could say. Um, things that were annoying but didn't distract my dog were the barking. And this could be because of the school that I went to. Our mascot is a bulldog, so um, <laughs> it could have been that. But for the most part, like I said, people were super respectful. I loved when people would like have their friend be doing something and they'd be like, what are you doing? That's a service dog. <laughs> and it always would make me laugh. Like, they're like, what are you even doing? And you're not supposed to be doing that. Don't you know that? That's obvious. And I always love that when I see it because people usually will correct themselves very fast <laughs> when their friend is like, girl, what are you doing? <laughs> so I also have down like people's reactions to the service dog. And like I said, most people just are more of an awe thing. You do get your few drive-by pet people that are like rude and pet the dog while you're walking by. You get the people that will bark at you. And you also get people who are scared of dogs. I can't speak for people who have different breeds of service animals, but considering that I have a lab, <coughs> um, typically people aren't really afraid of labs. So I can literally count on one hand how many times the entire time I've had cats for this whole three years that someone has been scared of him legitimately enough to like jump on one hand so it's not something that really happens for me as a handler with a lab so you know these are all things that you want to kind of think about if you're planning on getting a service animal if you're going to get a breed that looks scary or is more typically a breed that people associate with biting you know that's going to happen a whole lot more <laughs> so something to consider for sure because Cass is just a smiley puppy everywhere he goes, everywhere. He's always smiling. The number one comment I would get is how cute he is and how he's smiling. <laughs> He'd be like, he's just so happy. And I'm like, yes, he is always happy. Cass is just happy to be alive and breathing in here. And he inspires me to, to try and be the same way about life because no one teaches you about how to properly love life like a dog does. Definitely something that I appreciate about having my boy who is just back there sleeping. <laughs> I would also caution people who um, who already have a service animal and you're watching this video because you're planning to attend college and you already have a service animal. Just know that the environment is so so different that you may need to give your dog time to adjust. Cassie here I got, I said his name kind of low because he's sleeping, but um, I got him as a puppy while I was in university so he grew up there you know. He grew up with the huge crowds and the large buses that were like super cramped. He was 
there for it all and he was just used to it because that's what he grew up around. If your dog is used to like a rural environment, you definitely need to give them a little grace when you move onto campus. So what about when your dog has to use the bathroom? Welcome to your new bathroom companion. When you have to use the bathroom, they're there. And when they have to use the bathroom, you're also there. <laughs> so this is your new bathroom buddy to actually like answer the question. Basically how that goes is, at least for how I did it once Cass was older, obviously I did very differently when he was a puppy because puppies require more bathroom breaks. So when, once he was older, basically what we would do is we'd have him go to the bath, we'd, I'd have him go to the bathroom before classes and then I would, and then I would go to class and then go to the next class as well and then I'd have him do another bathroom break. We'd get lunch and then I would, before I ate, I would go ahead and feed him and then he'd just kind of like sit there and let his food digest while I ate and like continued eating and stuff um, and then I would go ahead and take him out to potty again and we'd also do like a sniff walk before our next class started. So our lunch break was kind of just time for me to eat him to kind of relax and have some free sniff time and just kind of chill was basically what our lunch break was for. When Cass is working, I typically like to make sure that he has potty breaks every four hours. I think that's fair and like bare minimum. If we're doing something where we're like walking a lot and he's drinking a lot of water, I'll try and like give him a pee break every like two hours just to be nice. If we're walking outside, by the way, that's not like inside. <laughs> if we're like inside a mall walking around, he's not getting a break every two hours. But if we're like, outside in like a field or something or like on a hike then things like that I will give him more water and more potty breaks. So what about when they get sick? <laughs> um wow so I have a lot of stories I have a lot of crazy university stories about Cass getting sick or me getting sick and definitely let me know if you want to see those because they're wild and we've also had some like strange things happen as well <laughs> so just let me know if you want to like hear about any of that but basically when your dog is sick you're sick and vice versa <laughs> so with a service animal you are likely going to be taking more sick days than you would have without one and that's just because when they get sick you have to basically stay home unless it's something that's not that serious but typically if it's not that serious they also would still be working they like an ear infection right typically a service dog is going to continue to work with that because it's not something that's like you definitely need to stay home let's say your dog just got neutered right typically when your dog gets neutered or spayed you need to watch them to make sure they don't bother the stitches and because of that it means that you need to really make sure to plan that in a way that you're not missing a ton of class. So for me personally, I did that over winter break and that's when he got his neuter. He got it like, I think the first day of winter break and then spent the rest of winter break recovering from it. Not his most fun Christmas, <laughs> but you know, um, it had to be done. Um, so yeah, when they're sick, you're sick. And when you're sick, they're sick. So, you know, y'all are both staying home. Um, there's no one else to watch your dog unless you have like that paperwork going or you don't live on campus and you live like your family or something then obviously somebody in your family can watch the dog. So if you live off campus or you live with friends that you have the paperwork for for them to watch your dog then obviously you can go ahead and leave your dog with them if their dog is sick and you don't have to miss class. But if you're somebody that lived in a dorm like me and like alone in that dorm and didn't have like paperwork for anyone to watch the dog besides you, if your dog needed to be watched, you needed to be home to watch it. So also, I, I don't know, for me personally, if my dog is not feeling well, I usually just want to be home with them anyways, because I want to watch them and make sure that they're not getting worse off to the point that they need to go to the vet. So for me personally, I wouldn't be able to focus in class anyways if Cass wasn't feeling well and he needs someone to watch him anyways so i would just stay home for that reason as well also so um a little story time part right here one day i was running really late to class and we basically had to run like all the way to class for quite a while and when we finally got to the building we were still late but <laughs> we weren't as late as we would have been had we not ran like because we had to run to catch the bus and then kind of like run to get to the building on time more like get there with it not being 15 minutes late so I was trying to get there we ended up being like five minutes late I think and I was just like you know what I'm gonna go ahead and drink a bunch of water because I'm thirsty he's thirsty so I'm just gonna go ahead and like drink this water out of this water fountain and I'm also give him some water and I made the mistake of doing that because I gave him too much water and if you have a dog and they exercise and you give them too much water you may know what comes next 
they like to throw up not literally like but <laughs> they they will they sometimes will throw up if you give them water after a bunch of activity i gave him the water and then i took him in class and as I'm sitting in class thinking like it was okay, I thought I didn't give him that that much water and we didn't do that that much activity. Um, looking back on it, that was so untrue. Um, we were both like panting and we both drank a bunch of water. Obviously my water stayed, his water did not. <laughs> and he started to make, you know, the typical dog sound before they throw up. Um, and I tried to rush him out the room and it did not work because he was, mid trying to throw up so he wasn't trying to move and then I had to watch as he threw up on the carpet in the classroom in front of everyone so so things like that can happen and it was no real big deal you know um people were so sweet they came and like helped me like pick it up and we got paper towels and we got to clean it right away and then afterward I was like I'm gonna go ahead and go home because he's not feeling good <laughs> and I'm also done with class today at this point Obviously, I didn't say that last part, but I was just like, I was over that whole day after that because I was just like, this is too much. So, you know, be aware that things like that can happen. And if you're anything like me, that might push you over your limit and you can't take any more of that day and you just got to go home. Luckily, it was a normal day, so it was fine. There was like, there wasn't any tests or anything like that. I was able to just be like, hey, my dog's sick. I'm going to go home. And besides, you know, even if he is back to his normal self, because dogs typically are back to their normal self. If they throw up from drinking a bunch of water, they'll typically go back to their normal selves after like, basically after they throw up. So, so they're usually fine. But, you know, I don't know. If I was working, I wouldn't want to continue working after I threw up. So I'm just like, I extend that I extend that same compassion to my dog. And I just took him home because I wouldn't want to work after I threw up. And also I was done with the day and, you know, yeah, it was a whole lot. So let's just go home. <laughs> so what about people with allergies and who are scared of dogs? So as far as allergies go with a dorm room, I'm guessing one of you would have to move out of that dorm and go into a different dorm. There's plenty of dorms usually on campus. If you've signed a contract, they can usually just like switch you with somebody and it's fine. I've never had this personally happen to me, so I can't really speak on the experience of it. I have had someone with allergies in my class before, but she was super sweet. I didn't even know she had allergies until like mid semester and we were doing like an attendance question icebreaker thing and she was like i'm allergic to dogs so i can't have a dog but if i was going to pick any animal then i would pick like whatever she was saying and the question was like what breed of dog would you get if you could own any breed of dog and everyone was like oh my god you're allergic to dogs <laughs> could we have a dog right here and she basically was just saying like it's not that severe or whatever um she sat two rows away from me so i mean it was never a problem i mean i never heard her like start sniffling and you know doing like a super allergic reaction and we never had an issue the whole semester with any kind of like severe allerg allergic reaction it has. I imagine if it was somebody with more severe allergies the person would probably need to go ahead and switch classes and they'd probably do that during ad drop but I don't know like I said I've not really experienced that much with people with allergies on campus but I do know the ADA text service dog handlers from discrimination due to allergies or fear of dogs. So as a service dog handler, we would not be required to switch classes. The person that is so, so afraid or so, so allergic that they have to switch classes, that's their thing to deal with. But overall, I would say the biggest change of you going to college with a service animal is that it's no longer just you as a student. It's now you and your service dog. <laughs> like, if you miss a day of class, no one's like, only you missed a day of class. It's like, where were you guys? <laughs> like, you know, it's, you're now a two person dog unit. And for me personally, I love that. I definitely think of Cass as an extension of myself and I don't mind people viewing him as an extension of me. But I know there are a lot of handlers out there that won't take their dog to classes for various reasons. Some of them have like disabilities that change day to day and so they may not need the dog in class with them that day. For me personally, that's not my case. Uh, my disability is there every day, <laughs> all hours of the day. So my dog tends to go with me everywhere. And I've also noticed that it's significantly worse when he's not with me. And almost always I will have something happen <laughs> when he's not there. So I tend to just not really go anywhere without him. If he's sick, I will just stay home because I'm gonna worry about him anyways. And if anything happens to where it gets worse, he needs to go to the vet anyways. So that's what I do. 
I will say I did go to the dining hall without him one time. He was getting groomed while I was there and everyone asked me like where he is and stuff like that, which is fine, you know, I don't mind it. But it can be a little bit stressful when you have like so many random people coming up to you and being like, oh, where's your dog? Literally people you don't even talk to will come up and be like, where's your dog? Or don't talk to you every day and things like that. But I talked to a lot of staff when I was at university and they were really sweet and they usually would like say something to us every day. But you would have those like few people that came out of nowhere <laughs> that you like never see and they're like, where's your dog? And I'm like, I don't even know you work here. <laughs> but everyone was always super sweet when I went to like the dining hall and classes and things like that and any kind of club activity that I was trying out people were super sweet. I did a research volunteer thing where we were like setting up a psychology research project thing and um, people were super sweet. We were outside setting up the project and cones and things like that and afterwards it was like not summer but like springish and so um, afterwards I went ahead and let them play in the lake had a good time it was great like I said I really appreciate puppy raisers that do all of what they do because I know that if there hadn't been puppy raisers already on my campus I would have had to do a lot more advocating for me and Cass as far as like people not touching him and people not like doing stupid things like barking and stuff like obviously you still have those things happen here and there but it's much 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 less when you go to a school that that has puppy raisers so um, I think that's about it though. So thank you for watching and let me know if you want to hear any of those fun university stories that I do have. Plenty more where that throw up came story came from so let me know. And if you have any more questions um, also let me know in the comments below. Um, subscribe and like and stick around and we'll hopefully see you next week. Great. Bye guys. Here's Cassie. Bye.